So let's get started and meet our first fooler of the night. When people find out I'm a magician from Salem, Massachusetts, they usually think pointy witch hats, cauldrons, stuff like that. But outside of the tourism industry, I've never once seen a person flying around on a broomstick. The way that I started to perform magic in a locked psychiatric unit was that I wanted to get into the field of psychology, but I didn't have any experience. I thought, what better way to get my foot in the door than to volunteer? Magic is a great way to demonstrate to someone that their own perception is flawed, and there are many ways we can misperceive reality. I continue to use magic in my work now as a therapist to help people learn about how they misperceive reality. And I'm working to help expose and destroy that illusion. Please welcome Tyler Twomney. Penn, Teller, Allison. People, I've come here to share with you a secret. There is enormous potential for magic in the world of office supplies. <laughs> Countless grand illusions have been performed with mighty skill on this large stage, and I've come waltzing out here holding just a pad of sticky notes and a pen. At this point, many of you are definitely thinking, you had me at office supplies, I'm sure this will be fantastic. <laughs> but in all earnestness, the illusion that you're about to experience is small, and you'll need to come in very close. For your effort, however, you'll be rewarded because what you will see will change the way you look at these little pieces of paper forever and prove that the greatest magic happens at the smallest scale. So with that, I'd like to invite Allison to join me. Thank you very much. Hi. Hello, Allison. Good to you. Now, Allison. Yes. These little pieces of paper often carry simple, mundane reminders to go to an important appointment with, say, the dentist. Hmm. Yeah. But they can also be imbued with much more meaning, like the I love you note placed in a school lunchbox, only to be discovered by one maybe slightly embarrassed child later that day at school. <laughs> For our little paper miracle to work, we can't just write any old thing down. We need something personally meaningful. Oh. So if you could please give us the first initial of someone near and dear to your heart, someone you love very much, someone who has had an enormous impact on the trajectory of your life. Uh, okay. S. S. Okay. I'm gonna draw two hearts with an arrow between them because we're gonna do something very interesting in just a moment. We're just getting started, but to really personalize this, we'll put your initial, which is A, in that heart, and their initial, which is S, S in this heart. And we'll put a little bird in this guy just to give it a little sense of depth, don't you think? Nice. Yeah. Two hearts, at one point, separated by space and time, until one day, everything changed. Mm. That's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna bring those hearts together. Thank you very much. It would be my greatest honor if that one day wound up on your refrigerator. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Thank you so much. You can go back. Maybe it's just me, but I'm sensing a little skepticism emanating from this general area. Yes, the gentleman in the suits. Uh, Teller, could you please join me up here on stage? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining me. It's an honor to meet you. You can stand right here. Now we're going to have you choose a letter, but not just any letter. I'm sure when you were younger, just starting out in your career, you had a big dream, a vision for your life. Okay? I want you to think of a big dream that you had that actually came true and the winding path that the pursuit of that dream took you down. All right, so just 
Think of one letter from the alphabet to represent that big dream, and you can whisper it right in my ear once you've thought of it. He can speak. <laughs> now, we're going to place that dream inside a perfect little bubble. Uh, not totally perfect, but it'll do. This is Teller's dream, and this is where we start to tell our story. Now, in the beginning, a dream is just a dream. It doesn't go anywhere until that initial exertion of effort sends it off in some direction. Then you gotta make some choices. He probably made some choices, some good, some maybe questionable. Sends it off in yet another. But then, through a series of events, both serendipitous and planned, we wind up where we are right here today. This is for you, and this is just one single page in the story so far. Thank you very much. Thank you. me when you had a marker because I just love any sort of office supplies so but that was fantastic thank you um, do all of your tricks involve office supplies uh, whatever it happens to be around generally speaking all right and do you work in an office well I used to and the origin of this trick started there and so what made you interested in doing magic here and fool us well I didn't think that I uh, would ever do a show like this, but uh, here I am. Surprise. Uh, <laughs> so do you think you'll fool Penn and Teller? No. No? Really? No. That's honest. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I like that they're still talking. Yeah. Yeah. Very dramatic furrow, brown. All right, well, it's time to go to Penn and Teller. Okay. Let's see if you fooled them or okay. not. All right. Yeah. Uh, you know, you told the truth, Tyler, right at the beginning. You know, you had us at office supplies. <laughs> That's when we loved you. We loved you right on the office supplies. It's, 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 just, it's just a really funny line. It's also really true. What we also love about this is that so often in Magic, uh, the props that you're showing are not all the props you're using. But we believe that everything you're using, we see. It comes from the, uh, comes from the post-it pad. It's really, it's really fabulous. And uh, we also love the fact that it deals with love and how hearts can move around. You know, you love one person and love another and things move from one place to the other. It also made me think of, um, you know, still haven't found what I'm looking for. I don't know if you're a U2 fan at all, but sometimes when, when, when U2 is playing and Bono moves right in front of the guitar player and for a moment he just covers up, well, the bass player one time and the, maybe the drummer another time and maybe the guitar player at another time he covers up when he when he moves in front of them you know and you just think that his heart is moving right over the guitar player in that way and uh, but I, I'm getting off into music I'm really supposed to be talking about magic but we really we love the act love the office supplies and I should get really back to magic but you know uh, our hearts moving around all over the place did any of that make sense to you I, I think so. <laughs> I, you know, this code is so good. I know. It's so good. It's so annoying. I think, it? I think they got it. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you didn't fool them, but we appreciate you coming. Thank you. Tyler But they're not off the hook yet. More foolers and more fool us coming up.